Hello there, this is Timmy the Tutor with a practice problem for the Texas Mathematics 4 through 8 teacher certification assessment. Uh, this example problem says find the zeros of a function f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared minus 14x minus 24. Okay, now to understand what a, a function is. Um, a function is a graph where for every x value it only corresponds to one y value. So say for example the graph of a circle. It's not a function because if I do what's uh, called a vertical line test, if I draw a vertical line through the circle, I see here that for this x value say of 1, it corresponds to a y value down here and it corresponds to a y value here. So it's not considered a function. Okay? So this is a cubic function. And a cubic function is a function, of course, and that's why it's called a function. Um, and it tells you that it will cross the x axis a maximum of three times. So, say for example, this is a cubic function. So sine waves and cosine waves, those are functions. And that's why they're called trigonometric functions. Um, so looking at the answer choices, since this is a multiple choice test, I will begin to analyze what my options are. This would be my first approach. Um, there are many approaches to the problem, but this is how I would approach it. I will look here and I see that it has this uh, positive 3, a positive 3 in common here. This one here has the negatives in common. Um, this one here uh, has a negative 8 that is not common in any of the others. This one has a negative 1 that is not common in any of the others. And, uh, and also a 7 that is not common in any of the others. Now the way standardized tests are set up is they have one problem that's just completely out there wrong and um, they have a problem that's very similar to the right answer um, so that you can begin to narrow down your answer choices. So those uh, problems there that none of the numbers appear to be um, uh, common in any of the others. I'm not even going to begin to try those. But when I look at answer choices A and D, I see that they have the same numbers, 4, 3, and 2. The only difference is, is that the 3 and the 2 are negative in answer choice D. <clears throat> and then I also look at my um, my coefficients or my exponents on my x's in the function. And I think about uh, placing a 4 here. Well, that's going to be 4 times 4 times 4. And then if I'm putting here, this would be 4 squared, so that's 4 times another 4. And then I only will have these smaller amounts on the tail end that I will be subtracting from that really large number. And I'm looking for the zeros, okay? So I'm looking to get a value of zero once I, I do this. So I'm not going to try answer choice D for substituting in. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not going to use A for substituting that in because it just seems like I'm going to get some really large numbers for those first two terms. So I'm going to start with substituting in the values from D. Okay, so this says that 4, the uh, graph will cross the x-axis at a 4, and uh, so this is how I would substitute that in. And remember, when you take this test, you are not allowed to use the calculator, no matter how rigorous these problems may appear to be. So if you think about 4 times 4, that's uh, 16, and 16 times another 4, 
that should produce 64. And then 4 squared is 16. And this is minus uh, 14 times 4, which is 56. And then we're going to take away another 24. So let's see here where we get 70. We get 80 here when we combine the positive numbers because 6 and 1 is 7 plus this 4 and 6 make 10, so that's 70. And uh, we're going to be subtracting the combination of these two, so this 4 and 6 make 10, and then this 7 and this 2 make, I'm sorry, 5 and 2 make 7 plus 1 makes 8. And so 80 minus 80 is 0. Okay, so that's with using this positive 4 here. But that still does not allow us to exclude this one as an answer choice because they both have that 4 in common. So if you wanted to actually um, choose one of the numbers that are not alike and whichever answer choice it actually worked in, then that's more than likely the answer. Okay, so let's do our next substitution. Let's get up here and erase what we have here. Hope you have that down. If not, you can just replay the video. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the substitution of the negative 3. And if that answer choice works, I am finished with the problem and there is no need for me to go on. Because that is where they differ. And 4 does not appear in answer choice B or answer choice C, so there's no need in checking those either. So all I'm doing is substituting now the other uh, 0 that they have listed as an option. And so negative 3 cubed is going to produce a negative answer because negative times a negative makes a positive, but then when you multiply that by another negative, you get a negative. So 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3 is 27. So it's negative 27. And then plus this negative 3 squared, well, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive, and it's positive 9. And then here I have a negative 14 times a negative 3, so it's going to produce a positive answer. 4 times 3 is 12, so that should make 42. And then I'm going to subtract 24. All right, so let's combine these positive things together. 42 and 9 make 51. And then this negative 27 and the negative... 24 combined through addition produces a negative and we're going to be adding it to this thing here so 7 and 4 is 11 carry that 1 so 2 and 2 is 4 plus 1 more is 5 so we have a negative 51 and a positive 51 which produces a 0 so answer choice D is the correct answer